how urgent of a need is it to get a to get a different truck? Yeah, this is the last thing I thought we'd be doing is truck shopping. If you find an F four fifty, don't even drive it. What? Look at this. This is crazy. This is crazy. Well, he's opening the gate, so we, we just he just showed us how you open the gate, and he told us where they keep all the keys. <laughs> <laughs> so who wants a truck? How secure is that? I'm not excited about trucks. Everybody gets a truck. Yay! I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we sold everything for a life of freedom and full-time travel. Follow our journey for tips, and we also share our mistakes. And we make plenty of them. Yes, we do. Thank you for subscribing, because you don't want to miss some of these videos we have coming up. We have some really exciting things happening. We do. And joining us today, we have a special guest. JD from Big Truck Big RV. Right, and he's like the expert on big trucks and yeah. who else but to help us find a big truck for our big RV. Right. When you look at a truck, especially a truck built after 2000, or sorry, 2010, the EPA has mandated so much emissions related equipment into the equation of a new modern diesel engine that you have to try to figure out what was the sweet spot from when the trucks were, you know, equipped with this emissions equipment that could potentially fail or potentially be the reason why your truck breaks down. And when was that period where they started getting better? And 2013 and newer is what I consider to be the best sweet spot of truck buying. When you're gonna look at a diesel truck and you're gonna look at what was offered by all three manufacturers, 2013 and newer tends to be when they worked out most of the bugs, they worked out most of the problems related to the diesel particulate filter failing, um, EGR sensors, which are your exhaust gas recirculation monitoring sensors to make sure that the whole emission system is operating correctly. When they started getting sensors that were a little bit more, you know, they would last longer. And if you look at trucks built from that time frame, they generally will go longer before you start to experience any type of major issue. Now Ford, in their Super Duty with a 6.7 liter power stroke, introduced improvements to the turbo in 2013, which made the truck significantly more reliable in terms of the engine. The transmission pretty much stayed the same. When you look at Ram with the Cummins and the Ison transmission, which it would really only be the only transmission I would recommend if you're looking at a Ram, the Ison transmission is a medium duty truck transmission. Medium duty is what I can, or is what to consider to be a class four or higher vehicle transmission. It's the same type of transmission you would see in like a UPS truck or a FedEx truck, something that is more commercialized. Okay. And the Duramax even, even with the Duramax Allison combination, it was a great platform, 2013 and newer. Prior to that, all of them had some type of issue that they needed to work out, whether it was related to the fuel injection system, whether it was related to, uh, you know, different parts of the fuel management or parts of how the engine actually operated with the emission system. And when you look at 2013 or newer, especially if you're looking at a truck with relatively high miles, that would be the only caution that I would have. Make sure that when you're looking at a higher mileage diesel truck, that that truck really wasn't used in an extreme fashion, that it wasn't a hot shot driver that was towing gooseneck trailers all across the country, or that it wasn't you know, a commercial fleet vehicle that was being used for oil field work or something that really put the truck through extreme use. Because you run the risk at that point of getting a truck that has components that may have lasted up until that point, but all of a sudden are meeting their life cycle when you get the truck. And the one really important factor to remember about newer diesel engines is that they hate water. So a lot of times people try to skimp out on spending money at higher volume fuel stations and they go to the lowest possible price they can buy diesel fuel. And if any moisture has built up inside of that fuel, it can lead to a fuel system failure on these newer trucks that have high pressure fuel systems. They're called common rail fuel systems. And they can lead upwards of fifteen to twenty five thousand dollars worth of repairs if you introduce any water into that fuel system. Wow. wow. So that's another reason to try to be sure to focus on trucks that if you can find one with relatively low miles built after twenty thirteen 
with a relatively low gear ratio, I would say 373 or 410. If you're looking at an, F4, uh, an F450, it would be a 430 gear ratio. But that's going to give you more of that bottom end torque. You're going to need to get a heavy trailer moving. And it's also going to position you in a way that you kind of can be certain that the track at least wasn't used for extreme over-the-road use. Okay. Sorry to be so long-winded. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense uh, totally. And uh, yeah, once I put in those variables, wow, the, the amount of trucks available out there really went down. It's like rare. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to find yep. them, uh, at least in a, in a price range that we thought we could, we could uh, or what we were kind of budgeting for at least. So. And that's the challenge. So, you know, you could look at trucks that are slightly older and which you have been, and the links that you sent me, the challenge I have, and this is a question I get pretty often from viewers is, you know, if my budget puts me into a truck that has roughly 150,000 miles on it, it's older, but the truck looks like it's in great condition. Um, should I get that truck? And from, you know, a channel that I like to give recommendations on things, it's hard to give recommendations on a high mileage truck just because I don't want to feel like I led you down the path of saying a truck is a good truck and then you get it you find out that it's you have $8,000 worth of repairs because yeah. it just has so many miles and most of your emissions related issues would occur around the 150,000 mile mark so by getting a truck that was built in 2011 to 2013 in that range you would start to expect some of the emissions related issues to start kind of rearing their head up around that 150,000 mile mark and they can lead to very costly repairs and that's just something that again I would hate to recommend somebody get into a truck with relatively high mileage and then deal with that type of an issue shortly after getting the truck right right yeah when I bought uh, the truck I have now uh, I got it didn't realize it had injector issues until way after the sale when I loaded down my original RV and yeah dropped I don't know three four thousand dollars on uh, new injectors uh, just because I didn't know <laughs> so and, well, and that's something that it's oftentimes very hard to know because you don't want to feel like somebody you know, scammed you or sold you a lemon, oftentimes the person who put the original miles on the truck kind of knew that I need to get rid of it before this mile marker because stuff will start to fail. And at that point, that's where, you know, when they sell it, they could have sold you a truck that was working perfectly fine when they had it, but they kind of knew that when, you know, I got to get rid of it before 130,000 miles because I know that I might have an injector-related issue, I, I know I might have an emissions-related issue, something could pop up on me and I don't want to deal with it. And that was kind of what people used to do in the past with some of those old sports cars like the Nissan 300ZX and these other vehicles that had timing belts. And they tried to get rid of the car at the 59,000 mile mark because they knew 60,000 miles was when Nissan recommended you change the belt. And if that belt broke, you could destroy the engine of that vehicle. Wow. So okay. it's kind of the same way with trucks. People try to get rid of them at a certain time frame to where they haven't had a single issue with it, but it means that the next buyer might have to deal with some of the problems. Okay. So, um, so it sounds like Ford is definitely uh, a brand you recommend. You said the Allison transmission with the Duramax is still decent at 2013 or later? Absolutely. Any of them are really good. So I hate to be brand specific because what it ultimately comes down to is what truck you can find that meets that criteria. So if you can find a Ram, if you can find a, a Chevy or a GMC truck, or you can find a Ford, if it meets that criteria of having under 90,000 miles, having good service records, having a relatively low gear ratio, like I said, 373. In the case of GM, you're gonna look at like the 360 uh, gear ratio area. But in the case of meeting all that criteria, then you're probably going to have a higher likelihood of the truck being reliable and being able to do what you're trying to do. 2013 is also the period of time where most all trucks could tow at least 20,000 pound fifth wheel trailers. Okay. Prior to that, there are some, even with 
even with RAM, you still have to be careful because there are some configurations of even brand new RAMs with a Cummins diesel engine and dually wheels that cannot tow 20,000 pounds. They're rated at 16,000 or 17,000 pounds because of the gear ratio. Okay. So that's something you just want to be careful of. RAM basically has trucks that go across the entire board in terms of what they're capable of. As low as 16,500 pounds for a dually, all the way up to 35,000 pounds for a dually, depending on how the truck's equipped. And uh, some of these used truck dealerships that we're looking at, um, they get these trucks from auctions. Uh, you think that's a not a good place to shop, or is that, you know, what do you think? What's it's, your opinion on that? There's nothing wrong with that. So a lot of people don't realize how used vehicles end up at auctions. Basically, if I have a, let's just say a Ram, a 2012 Ram 3500 dually diesel truck, and I have 150,000 miles on it, if I take that truck to... Um, CarMax, or if I take that truck to an Auto Nation or any of the large brands, new car dealerships, they're going to still want to trade it in for whatever I want, but then they're going to take that vehicle and sell it to an auction because it has too many miles for them to put on their lot. And oftentimes, most of these dealerships are offering some type of a certified warranty on newer, ve newer used vehicles that they sell. And what they'll do is, if that vehicle falls out of the mileage criteria for them to keep it on their lot, they'll sell it at auction and make some money off of it. And then the auction house makes some money off of it and it ends up on a smaller kind of buy here, pay here lot. Okay. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, but you do have to be a little careful at times because you don't know if that vehicle was sold at auction with damage, then the dealership purchased it, did repairs to it to sell it on their lot. And oftentimes if that is the case, some of the damage that could have happened to these trucks could be pretty extreme, but it was just never totaled out. And so it has a clean title, but it was, you know, essentially sold as a vehicle in great condition, not knowing that it was involved in some type of an accident or collision. And there's, there's not a lot of ways of really knowing unless you get a mechanic to actually look at the truck or you get a collision shop to look at the truck and specifically look for areas that may have been repaired. Okay, wow. If, you know, my, my number one suggestion, and this is one that I would highly recommend trying, is look for... Uh, well, let me back up a second. When you're looking for a truck, oftentimes people think a pre-owned diesel is the way to go. Um, to kind of give you perspective on this, the first Super Duty that I owned after I had a couple Duramax trucks was my 2011 F-250. And it was a Lariat Ultimate uh, crew cab, four-wheel drive F-250. And I actually sold that truck to a dealership for about three thousand four years after buying it for about three thousand dollars less than what it would, what I paid for it. It wow. held its value that well. Now, what I'm saying here is that you may even want to look at a new truck and look at with some of the discounts and rebates and incentives that are in place at the end of the year, your number one value truck in terms of getting the most discounts off of its MSRP would be a Ram. There are some dealerships around the country that will sell a brand new Ram dually truck with the Cummins engine with a good gear ratio, sometimes even with the higher output uh, Cummins and the Ison transmission, and they'll take 13 to 15 grand or more off of the price just to get rid of them. And they have a lot of flexibility. And I did a video on this a while back where basically I went to, um, I went to a website of a dealership called Dennis Dillon, which is based in Ohio or Utah. It's one of the two platforms. And they had dually trucks with the Ison transmission high out coming brand new in the current year for $20,000 off of MSRP. And you could get these trucks for the mid-30s. Wow. For a brand new truck. Wow. Wow. So I would not exclude looking for really great deals on a new truck because you might find that those deals make it just about the same price as buying a used one, but you're going to get better financing options. You're going to get right. better um, incentives to get into it that might make it actually more affordable than getting a used truck that you may have to deal with with you know later on with repairs and other issues and you get longer use out of it because those problems won't arise that are anticipated Absolutely. down the line and it's all covered under warranty 
Right. You don't have to buy the extended warranty. You don't have to deal with possibly breaking down. I mean, the likelihood of something could always occur, but, you know, will it actually happen is much lower, of course, if you get a new truck. So I'm not trying to push you into kind of looking for a new truck, but I know oftentimes you know how much these trucks are brand new. They run upwards of, of $100,000, depending on how you get them. And if you look at some of the lower bulk packages like Ram with their big horn or longhorn package, not longhorn, I'm sorry, the big horn package, um, or the, uh, I think they have another version of it that, that they sell in different regions, but it's their bulk package. It still comes with a lot of great features, a lot of great perks, spec'd out the way you want it, but you can get it for a significantly lower price depending on the dealership you look at. And I'd recommend, I have no affiliation with Dennis Dillon, uh, Ram at all, other than the fact that they were the only dealership I could find nationally that advertised a price that included all of their discounts. And it was pretty extraordinary to see how much of a discount they would give on some of their new trucks. Wow. Well, thanks for that tip. That's uh, we great will, information. We will definitely look at that. Yeah, because uh, that was sure. completely off the table before. Yeah. Yep. And another thing to think about, you do have... Now, this is where my subscribers, uh, if any of them are watching, they'll probably give me give me hell over. But <laughs> for the size of fifth wheel you have, I would absolutely recommend a dually. In, uh, in no way would I say do that with a single rear wheel truck. However, there are some single rear wheel one-ton trucks that meet the payload as well as the towing capacity of your momentum. I'm only saying that because... If you look at some of these trucks, they'll actually have a higher tow rating and a higher payload capacity than your 2006 model truck. And if that's the case, you're technically moving up in terms of capability and putting yourself in a safer position than you're currently at. So that would be the only justification if you end up getting a, a one-ton single rear wheel truck. Now, because of the amount of pin weight that your tra your trailer carries on it, I'm assuming it's transferring roughly 4,500 pounds to the back of your truck, maybe 4,000 pounds in that range. A dually would absolutely be the safer bet because you have the redundancy of having two additional tires in case of a blowout, as well as the stability and traction on the ground that will get you out of some hairy situations that you might find yourself in, especially if it's overly windy or you're traveling through, you know, over, over rough terrain. Yeah, I really like the dually as far as that stability when pulling. That's that's really been nice. Now, a suggestion, this is a cautionary note, if you find an S450 and it is in your price range and meets the, the criteria that you're looking for, for mileage, for records, all that stuff, then, you know, drive it, see what you think. But if you find an F450 and you just want to drive it just to experience it, if it's outside of what you can spend or outside of what you're looking for, don't even drive it. Simply because <laughs> when you drive it and you feel that extra how tight it turns, especially coming from a dually, you almost don't want to drive anything else. And it, it was crazy because that's exactly what the conversation I had with Mark with keep your daydream. I said, if you drive the F450, just be careful because you won't be able to go to an F350. <laughs> the the truck gets so much tighter. And he tells me, he goes, absolutely, I can't go to an F F350. After you drive the 450, the maneuverability that you have, it's about seven and a half foot tighter turning radius. You, wow. you really can't go to a 350 because you feel like you've lost all that maneuverability. Wow, and is that from years starting back even at 2013? Even at 2008. Oh, wow. Yep, so the F450 has always been signified by having what they call a fat boy front end or wide track front suspension is what it's officially called. Wide track simply means that the tires on the front of the wheels have been moved out an extra three inches on each side. So six inches total, total um, increased width over a 350. And what that does is it allows them to put the steering stops at a significantly tighter angle because the tires were, will no longer hit or rub the frame. So you can actually turn the tires in much, much sharper and you can get roughly a 47 degree turning angle out of the front of your tires compared to the typical 37 degrees that you get with a standard pickup truck. 
Well, that sounds like what we want. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds great. Uh, <laughs> can we oh, find yeah, one of those bikes tomorrow? It's a world of difference maneuvering, especially <laughs> if you're taking any of those, those tight turnarounds in traffic where you have to do a three-point turn and you have to drive over the curb. 450 handles it like a sports car. Wow. wow. Impressive. Well, that might be the... And that's really the only huge perk for me for a 450 is that turning radius. That might be a, a dream uh, for now, uh, but... Uh, yeah, wow, we have a lot to think about, a lot to look at. Yeah. And email me your recommendations. If you find a truck and you just want to get some feedback on it, if you think that it might be the one and you just want another set of eyes to look at it, just send it to my email. I'll be happy to uh, to give you my opinion. Sweet. Okay, and I, I will get back to you with what we find out. Sounds good. You ever work your way through Texas? Let me know. Uh, that sounds oh, great. We'll we, do it, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. We, we will. We have a few people wanting to see us out there. Yeah. So. And we want to see you in person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to get a picture with you. Send us a, send us a picture. <laughs> there you go. My, face is my face blurs any cameras. <laughs> <laughs> like in that horror movie or something. <laughs> well, thank right, you so much, JD. Okay? Uh, and, well, you take care. We'll talk to you again soon. Sounds good. Take care. Have a great day. Bye. Bye now. All right. Bye-bye. Wow. Yeah. Talk about mind blown yeah. information. It's like that emoji where his brain's exploding. Yeah. There's so much great information. It, it really it, is. Uh, we are so grateful. Yeah. Thank you so much, JD, uh, for sharing all that information uh, with us and, and our viewers because... I mean, there's so many people out there that just are not truck experts. Right. And well, it's a lot to learn. There's a, there's so many components to finding the right truck, the right hitch for the right RV. And it does take a lot of homework, a lot of research. And when you have somebody that's well-versed and really intelligent and understands all these components, it's so helpful. It saves them a lot of time and research. Right. Totally. And you can't trust a salesperson to oh, give no. you honest information Never. right so they're trying they to make the sale yeah. and if they you know fluff it up a little bit and say like i was told with my first truck that oh this truck can pull anything well they could be fluffing it up or they just may not know this right is a lot of information right and so i mean uh, big Truck Big RV. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you head over there and subscribe. We will put a link down below in the description as yes. well for uh, their channel. And uh, yeah, a lot of great information. Great I've been binging yeah. on <laughs> JD's videos trying to learn as much as I can about this. And uh, it's like, you know, we thought RV crushing truck was a really bad thing, but and look at all the information and all the good things that are coming out of it all the things we're learning and you know we wouldn't have thought about getting rid of the truck but now it's time to get a different truck right and so, so we're we're on the search and and uh well we better keep searching yep get busy <laughs> yeah oh we are gonna go take a look at fords <laughs> I, I i don't know how i feel about uh changing brands <laughs> to a Ford. From Chevy not. to Ford. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's some people that have opinions on that. I don't know. What truck should we get? I mean, what do you guys think? Uh, Ford, Chevy. Chevy and GMC are basically the same. Yeah. And, uh, or uh, Dodge, Ram. Uh, I mean, those seem to be the big three or four that people go with for a tow vehicle. And uh, yeah, let us know in the comments what your favorite is. And uh, you know, yeah, we'll Two miles, take exit 10 B, fry for east. I guess we're just about beach. there. Yeah. And he's like the expert yeah. on big trucks. So. Uh, well, you're gonna have to start over. You got a big spit thing on oh, your lip. Oh man, I saw the spit come out and it's like. It's stuck to your <laughs> lip. Well, that's lovely. Yeah. That's not making the outtakes. No, it's not. What color is it? Black. Let's buy that one in the front. Just like uh, Henry Ford said about the Model T, you can have any color as long as it's black. Uh -huh. <laughs> Shree loves to go truck shopping. Yeah, that's what I want to spend my time doing. That's uh, somebody's 
door is open. Not mine. <laughs> It might be yours. Oh. <laughs> it's yours. I guess it's mine. Yeah, I want a new car. You get a truck and you yeah, get a truck. I have to shut it now, so. Whoa, dude.